Hey guys, Jeff Standridge here, Managing Director of The Conductor. Thank you for being with us tonight uh, for our monthly Game Changers event. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen you all and uh, we're excited tonight to have our featured guest, Amy Denton. Uh, Amy is the CEO of Pediatrics Plus. Amy, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, appreciate it. You bet. So we will just jump right in. I will tell you guys that if you would like to, um, to send a, an, a, an email question or something that you would like for us to talk about, a question for Amy uh, or myself, you can put it in the chat function if you're logged in uh, on Zoom. If you're joining us via Facebook Live, welcome. Uh, you can put it in the comments and we have Miranda who, who's monitoring the comments and she'll be uh, pushing those questions over to us. We'll have a question and answer session toward the end of the evening uh, but please feel free to put those questions in as they come to you and we'll answer them in the or we'll offer the opportunity for Amy to answer them uh, in the order that they come through. So with it, let's uh, let's get started. Amy, um, we will get to Amy Denton, the physical therapist and the CEO and business owner as we progress a little bit through the evening. But let's start right now with what I like to call the Amy Denton origin story, right? Let's talk about uh, your background, growing up, uh, anything that you want to tell us about you and family and those kinds of things. Let's start there. Okay, so um, I'm actually the middle of three daughters. So, and my hmm. parents are public school educators. So my mother taught first grade for um, over 30 years. Wow. And my dad started out as a basketball coach, moved to principal, moved to superintendent. So pretty much my whole middle school years up, he was the superintendent of the school that I went to, which is Highland. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it. It's up in a really small town in North Arkansas, about 15, 20 minutes off the Missouri border. Okay. Um, but okay. everybody knows the Spring River or Cherokee Village, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's up in that general area. A great place to grow up. Lots of, um, well, the river and then lakes and golf courses and rec centers. And so we spent a lot of time outside. My dad's a big hunter and fisher. So, and the fact that we had three, he had three daughters, we did a lot of that with him. So, wow, uh, great. Yeah. So, anyway, I grew up there, uh, went to high school um, at Highland. Still, it, it wasn't even a town when I went lived there. It was just a school. I had mm -hmm. a party um, address and an Ash Flat phone number. Those were two towns, about 500 people each. <laughs> so, uh, the school was consolidated, um, but just overall really small. And now it's actually a um, city. So, uh, which has changed since the however many years ago I left, um, nearly 30 years ago. And so how big was your graduating class? Well, actually, because it was consolidated, I had 88 in that class. Which wow. Not Fantastic. bad for that yeah. area. Yeah. And, and Hardy, there was a, there was a TV show, a reality TV show about Hardy. Class of the Ozarks. Clash of the Ozarks. That was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. That's where I grew I, I guess you knew all those people. <laughs> Knew of the family. Some of them, yes, I had <laughs> gone to high school with a few of them, but the uh -huh, family uh -huh. yes, are pretty uh, notorious um, in the yeah. area. So um, yeah, and so uh, I I figured out just from from watching since then that much of that was kind of staged because those people really are friends. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and it's a great place. I mean, I can't yeah. I can't even say enough about growing up there and just all the different things that kids got to do. It, it, I really, really had a great. Uh, childhood growing up in that area. I understand. So I middle child. Your dad's a superintendent. You don't get to do anything, right? No, uh, yeah. Be good all the time. Absolutely. And so middle middle child. So I I, I I can identify, right? So always trying to, to please somebody, right? That's and, right. And so, out, so. Um, I meet the total stereotype of middle child. I am a um, super people pleaser, uh, super um, I call it kind of control freak. I need a little mm -hmm. bubble tied around everything. I like order. And um, I, for those of you who are familiar with Enneagram, I'm a one. So mm -hmm. I like rules. I like integrity. I like to know exactly what expectations are. Um, and I really was a good kid because yeah. that's just kind of naturally <laughs> who I am. Um, so I, yeah, just totally did everything I was supposed to do. Um, well, for a while, I had a little couple of years, maybe later. In my so did your, did your parents actually have a photo album that was just yours or did you get two pages in the back of your older sister's photo album? Because I, I got two pages in the back of volume nine of my older brother's photo I album. I actually do have 
a pretty, it's not nearly like my older sister. Uh -huh, it's uh -huh. better, but it's better than my younger. Right. <laughs> So when she hit the yeah. third child and my mother like, talks, yeah. Well, it's so, like, yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, here's two, here's two, here's two Polaroids. Right. So my poor younger sister didn't nearly get as much, but yeah, I, I, I'm not, not too bad, I guess. All right. And so you're married, have kids. Yeah. So, um, I, my husband, it, I married, uh, Todd. We actually, I went to UCA, um, to go to school to be a physical therapist, I actually chose UCA because I wanted to be a physical therapist. And at that time, that was the only school that was, uh, that had PT. Um, and I'd always wanted to work with kids and pediatrics. So get, go to Conway, I'm in school. And I actually met my husband who was, who had moved there to start an insurance agency when I was in physical therapy school. Um, so graduated from PT school and went immediately into pediatrics to work and loved it. So um, I actually um, also in, which a lot of people don't know this about me, when I was at, in uh, undergrad, it was so competitive to get into the PT, PT program. And I, I believe it still is that yes. competitive. Um, that I was so worried I wouldn't get in and being the, you know, having to have a plan constantly. Um, I've got worked on my, sorry about that y'all, my education. Uh, degree at the same time. So wow. uh, made sure that if I didn't get into PT school that I would student teach and could go into the working world immediately because I wow. had to plan all the time. Uh, so when I graduated, I went fine, did get in, graduated, did go to work and, and loved it. Um, and, and where did you work at right out of, uh, right out of college? I worked at Easter Seals. Okay. Uh, first job out of school and I was living in Conway and commuting to Little Rock. Um, and so I finally was able to then get a job in Conway a couple of years later. I had gotten rear-ended twice on the interstate <laughs> trying to get to work in the morning. So uh, did come back to Conway to work. And not long after that, um, we bought Pediatrics Plus. So I got married a couple of years um, after I graduated and in 2002, actually. And then within five months, we had bought Peace Plus. Gotcha. So I was a newlywed. We had moved back to Little Rock at that point um, because my husband traveled for work and needed to be close to the airport. So I had moved to Little Rock and then started a business all within five months of getting married. Um, gotcha. A lot. It was a lot during that time. And I had no idea what I was doing. None. none. So well, we're going to dig into that and we'll expose some of that here in a little bit, if that's all right. So yep. two daughters. <laughs> Uh, a, a son and a daughter. I have a son and a daughter. Son and a daughter. Yeah. Eighteen year old uh, daughter named Kate and a thirteen year old son named Max. And they're Very big good. basketball. They play basketball. Both of them for school and for summer travel. So, so do they? Do, are, are they contemplating what they want to do? Or following in mom's footsteps, dad's footsteps? Do they know yet? I don't think they do know. I think they probably right now. My daughter would probably get as far away from us. <laughs> I feel sorry. <laughs> That's for my normal. Kids. I, you know, when you're in this business world and you're dealing with people all the time, everything I see that bothers me, I'm coming and preaching it in my house. And they're probably like, oh, my, I'm get, they're getting a double dose. Yeah, we should, we should probably, yeah, yeah, we should probably compare notes because I, I think I probably did the same thing. Oh, actually, I know I did. So, yeah, they may, she, she may want to step away a couple of years and breathe, but uh, no, it's not that bad. But um, I do preach a lot in our home. Um, on the things I don't want them to be. <laughs> well, let's let's shift a little bit over into uh, Amy, the the professional. We've talked a little bit about you know as a physical therapist and pediatrics. So so you you acquired Pediatrics Plus. It was yeah. an existing uh, existing company. So talk a little bit about what it was and what led you guys to actually make that transaction. So when I was working in Conway, I worked with another PT who had started this business with her husband and named it Pediatrics Plus. They were running it out of their house. It was a small home health pediatric business. There was kind of a, a need for serving school age kids um, that wasn't really being met in the area. She had tried to pick up. And so I actually was working for full time at my job and then a couple of hours after school for her at this company and some just life circumstances hit them. And one of them, his job transferred him to Missouri. 
Mm. They had started this Arkansas business and it wasn't a really a transferable business. It was all based on mm. Arkansas Medicaid licensing and different things. And so uh, we started talking one day and I, you know, one of the things that'll be a pattern in this discussion today is I have, you know, I was talking about rule following. I'm very particular. People would call me either a control freak or tell me I have OCD, which are both all true. I'm the recovering, trying to recover um, from it. So there were things that I wanted to do different in my day to day that I wasn't always super, really satisfied with or felt like it could be better. So I thought this would be an opportunity to try to do it on my own with the expectations that I had. And so we did, we uh, bought it. It was about 20 clients, maybe about six to eight uh, part-time therapists working, doing all home health. And then we ran it out of our guest or I uh, guess home office for a year after we bought it before we leased about 2,500 square feet of space, then grew out of that and added more and then opened our first 18,000 square foot facility. And when I th was thinking back to kind of prepare for this, I don't really even know, I can't even remember how it got there. I just remember the referrals were coming in faster than I could hire. Wow. There was just a, no one was specializing at mm -hmm, that time. Mm -hmm. So, so to give, to give our viewers uh, a, a little bit of an idea. So, so, 20 clients, six to eight part-time people, you bought it. And so that was 2002. Right. So 20 years later, you are what? So just tell us how many people, how many employees, how many clients, how many employees, how many locations? Uh, three, uh, maybe close to 4,000 uh, clients. Okay. Oh, 900 to 1,000 staff, okay. seven locations, six in Arkansas, um, one in Texas. Okay. And continuing to grow and acquire. So wow. very cool. It's been, yeah. And it's a lot of it. So we had some organic growth. We had some acquisitions in the process. It just, um, mm -hmm. all along the way though, we were just, um, really focusing on what I think the right things were. And so we didn't spend marketing. We, I don't think we spent a dollar on marketing for eight years. Mm. Really. Wow. We were recruiting <laughs> mm -hmm. trying to, yeah, hire yeah. to, to serve, um, the clients that were coming to us. Yeah. And so your no, locations in our, Ahead, I'm no. sorry. Say again. I said that has not stopped. Yeah. The referrals have still not stopped. And so is your biggest location Conway or is your bigger, you have yeah. bigger locations? At, okay. Conway was our first. And then we add, as we grew, we would build, when we'd learn and do better, we would build these better facilities and these other sites. And then we went back and did an upgrade hmm. to Conway. But yes, it is our largest facility and always every day has our largest waiting list. Really? Yes. And so talk a little bit about the services of Pediatrics Plus and kind of the, 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 the mission of what you guys try to do and be. So we, uh, Pediatrics Plus serves children with special needs and it's a variety, um, kind of what we call whole child minded approach. So we provide physical, occupational and speech therapy on an outpatient basis and also as part of our developmental preschool. We also provide um, applied behavior analysis, which we call ABA for children. It's a specialty evidence-based program for kids with autism. Mm -hmm. We have started in the last couple of years working in the behavioral health realm. Well, we're starting to offer behavior services for these kids mm -hmm. because when you start looking at a child with special needs, especially some of these more severe kids, it affects all aspects of the kid and the family. So we mm -hmm. try to provide family support and just try to what we call the wraparound services for these kids um, to get them to a better place across the board, um, not just in a single area of need. So we just really focus on the whole family and make it and trying to get them to uh, as good of a, as the highest potential they can reach. Gotcha. So for all of you who have tuned in on Facebook Live, if you have questions, please put those in the comments. Uh, for those uh, who are on via Zoom, you can put your questions in the chat and we'll be getting those uh, to Amy. I'm here with Amy Denton, who's the CEO of Pediatrics Plus. Uh, she was telling us multiple locations around the state and in Texas, 4,000 clients, close to 1,000 employees. Um, and so Todd involved in Pediatrics Plus as well. And so talk a little bit about what it's like uh, in working uh, with, with a spouse. How does that, how does that work? <laughs> really? You want me to say that out loud? <laughs> no, um... This is your opportunity to... <laughs> 
to I'll return the you. favor. So as much as I'd like to jab at him, there there would be no pediatrics plus at this level right now without him. So you've got to right. remember, I am a physical therapist. I'm a science mm -hmm. and math major going into mm -hmm. college. I have zero business sense whatsoever, um, but my husband is super entrepreneurial and very, very business minded. So he's a business finance major. Mm -hmm. So when we decided to do this, he came alongside me and he was the one really that was the business support. I mm -hmm. went base, I mean, I, my business school was him mm -hmm. and really walking me through, um, you know, access to capital, how to get that. What do you need? How much space do you need? Um, make, he built our first spreadsheets for um, billing. When mm -hmm. I bought it, it was all on paper and he took it into an electronic system that then we turned into a software company that we own and are selling the software to our, to other um, providers. All of that started with him coming through. Um, so as much as, you know, it's not easy working day in, day out with your spouse, but luckily for me, he's in the insurance business 40 hours a week or more like 60 hours a week yeah, and travels yeah. for work. Um, so this was kind of his side gig. It was helping me do this. Now, not so much anymore. He's way more involved. We're way too big to not have his involvement um, mm -hmm. in it, but um, it was definitely a good partnership. And Very good. So Detasso was in our 10X Growth Accelerator. Yeah, and Detasso yeah. is the software company. So talk a little bit about what caused you to spin off a, a, another company that's owned by, by Pediatrics Plus or by, by the principles of Pediatrics Plus in Detasso. What, what caused that and what are you trying to do with that business? Well, we, um, like I said, started with spreadsheets. We hired a, um, a programmer and started working. And then we hired Ben Watson, who mm -hmm. was the most gifted person in terms of he could speak programming language and communicate with us well in terms of what we needed. So we designed this really great software program that just revolutionized everything about our business. So it, we looked for software for two years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nothing fit exactly what we did. And so we decided to do it on our own and, we, and it's got this excellent practice management piece, which is a, what a lot of billing softwares don't have. Um, and then we added on the um, progress note and billing piece of it, everything posts back. And so um, it was just great. And so you're sitting there with this amazing product and you know, everyone around you needs it because mm -hmm. there were a lot of people in our industry still working off paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just went out to the market to see and it started booming. And so now we are selling to clients in Arkansas and outside and, and in Texas. So would it be would it suffice to say that it's effectively a, a, an electronic health record, electronic medical record for specifically for pediatric therapy services? Yes, right now okay. it's actually can be used for adults. They have built some okay. modules okay. or some different components to it to use for any type any type client and any type payer or service. Um, it's evolved a lot. So when we mm -hmm. spun it off, I stepped away. I'm still over here and they're over mm -hmm. there. So. Yeah. Um, I give feedback on the pieces that help our industry and others, but right. day to day, not necessarily as involved. Great. Um, so one of the questions came in from Luke. Luke said, what makes Pediatrics Plus different from your competitors? How, how do you differentiate yourself? Um, I know absolutely it's the investment we make in our people. So we provide services. Everybody does a good job with providing services and what and all of those pieces. But I do think where we are, um, where we set ourselves apart is we spend an entire massive amount of time on culture and leadership and making sure that our people, we really invest in our people. I've always said from the very beginning, we are a service business. This business is people. We don't build anything. We're not trying to sell anything. So if we don't invest in the people that we have, we're not going to be as good as we can be. It is a lot of work to create a mission and vision and values and hold people accountable to that day in and day out. We prioritize it though. There are a lot of times when we're like, we gotta have a leadership meeting. Oh, well, there's so much to do. No, 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 no. We're still yeah. gonna have that leadership meeting. We're not gonna ever let that slide. And so it's super intentional, the time we spend with our people. You give us some examples maybe of, of um, what you do with your people that you think is different than folks in your space. Okay. Um, well, leadership's a requirement and we let different departments, depending on what they do, kind of design their own plan. But one of the things we do that I think makes the biggest difference is we have one-on-one -on -one meetings. 
Um, so every person in our organization has a supervisor that they get a, a, a meeting with on a designated time frame where they can give feedback back up the chain. Hmm. So to me, you know, I started out as direct care. I'm now several levels up, but I, so I don't know what we need to change or what needs to happen. And so we want that feedback delivered from the direct care level all the way up. So it gives an opportunity for people to give us feedback on things we can do better, but also for the staff member to say, hey, here's where you are and here's where you can get better. Um, and so we do a lot of targeted leadership. So, you know, not everybody has the same strengths and weaknesses. Sure. So yeah. when you, and then it helps build relationships yeah. and trust Loyalty. You're mm -hmm. yeah. in the room together and you're talking through all of that. And so I think that's, um, and, it, and it's really the intentionality of it. I can't tell you how often people, we get so busy that people don't want to do that yeah. or, or don't, they don't not want to, but they, other things can seem to take priority, but we make it a priority. Yeah. So that feedback back and forth, I think has been huge for both yeah, I've, I've, and the employee. I've always said, you know, if you, if you want to find out what's really going on in a business, get as close right. to the client as you can. And, and in your instance, in a services business, particularly, it's those caregivers. They're the ones who are interacting with your clients and on a daily basis. listen day. and make changes when you can, if yeah. you can. You do. Yeah. I mean, because they know better. They're down there and they see all of the pieces that need, need to be adjusted. Yeah, it's one thing to, to, to talk with them. But when you do talk with them, you are creating an expectation that something's going to change. And so having to communicate back to them that you've heard them, this is what we heard from all of you guys, and these are the changes we're going to make as a result. That can be difficult, as you said. Well, and even if you can't make the change, you go back to me and tell them why, That's right? right. Yeah. So here's why. We tried this before, it didn't work, or here's the obstacles, come up with a different solution for us. And so, but we never stop those conversations. We, the expectation is the feedback. We want that. Um, and it's really hard sometimes for people to feel confident enough to bring that feedback up the chain, but we really, really try to make, set a real uh, level of comfortability, I guess if that's a word, um, so people don't feel intimidated to tell you, hey, you know, y'all could do this better, because yep. um, that's me, right? I always, I have a hard time not wanting to improve daily, right? and sometimes you have to slow down a little bit and let everybody get you know, yeah. uh, master some things and have a little break and keep pushing. But um, I like, I love the feedback, even if it's something we're not doing as well as we should. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So guys, we're with Amy Denton, CEO of Pediatrics Plus. Again, if you're on Facebook Live, uh, feel free to put questions in the comments. If you're here with us on Zoom, put them in the chat box. We'll be glad to get those in front of Amy momentarily. So Amy, let's talk about, um, you know, if you were to articulate one or two of what you think are your top leadership successes, you, you know, you made this transition from being a practitioner. And I know having been in healthcare myself, many times it's, it's, it's the best technician or the best practitioner that moves into a leadership role. And sometimes the best practitioner, uh, having the best practitioner skills or the best technical skills is, is a little bit <laughs> antithetical to being, having, being the best leadership skills, right? So, so how did you make that transition from being a a math and science technology practitioner to being a leader and maybe talk a little bit about that transition and what do you think were some of the successes well, I get on a bunch of that when we talk about failures okay. <laughs> we'll get there yeah. on what not to do right, all right. So all right. we talk about middle child people pleaser afraid of confrontation all of those things that was me for the first five or six years of this company mm -hmm. but the collateral damage was finally enough for me to decide, no, 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 no. I'm gonna have to hit this stuff head on. And so I am a self-proclaimed nerd. Let's just throw it out there. I read nonstop. It doesn't matter what the subject is. If it's something that I'm in, interested in, I, I will not just read a little bit. I will dig and dig and dig. Mm. And so in terms of leadership and business, I read books. And then tried, I read books of really successful leaders and successful businesses and looked for patterns and what they were doing to really try to, to push those things into our company, um, which helped a lot. And then, of course, I leaned on my husband as well. But for successes, I'll tell you, my biggest fear as a young, late 20s running a business was growth um, because I couldn't, 
wrap my head around how we could grow and maintain quality. It was really difficult. And so this is a really great story, but my husband who knew, knows that about me and who really was thinking we need to grow. If you're not growing, you're dying is basically what they would say. And, and that has proven to be true over the last 20 years. When things would happen, we could have lost one site if we didn't have the other six. So, I mean, I, I, that has actually come true um, for me, but I was so afraid of growth for the control piece of it. And so he set me up and actually Krista, my partner, to go to dinner with Rick Bizet. So we got a church at New Life and um, New Life was growing at this time too. And so we go to dinner with Rick and Michelle and we got ambushed. That's all I can say is we go in there expecting to explain to him while we aren't ready. And we came out ready to grow because Rick was like, listen, y'all have a mission. You do great things why would you not want to take that and impact more people? Why are you letting the fear keep you from creating this impact? Like, do you not think other families need what you have to offer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. So mm -hmm. we left dinner and we were ready to grow the next day. So it was, um, but still one of the most impactful times in my career mm -hmm. of changing how I thought about growth. Um, and then this piece now, I think the second success that kind of falls right in line with that is, wow, the leaders that we've been able to grow and watching mm -hmm. people that came to us in their 20s and now they are leading departments or um, sites and just knowing you were able to give them the opportunity to shine their talents and their gifts and make more money and be more successful and go down mm -hmm. these paths for themselves. I mean, that's been great for me. But Matt, when you watch other people that you've been a part of that, help make that happen for them, man, there's just nothing better. So yes. I think those two things line up with each other so well. Very good. You've also done some nonprofit work as a result of Pediatrics Plus, right? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, early on, we had a lot of families coming in and, you know, when you're small and um, they're talking to you a lot and they're telling you, you know, some of these kids just don't have the opportunity to play sports or do these activities like their siblings are able to do. And they're, you know, maybe lacking in some friendships or having some social issues. So um, we created a nonprofit and um, we started out with a theater program that Krista and another, um, actually Lynn Holloway, who's a professor at ECA now, um, had done as part of a student um, project. So we started the theater program through the nonprofit and that since then now that nonprofit provides extracurricular activities and sports, um, art and golf, anything you could possibly imagine for children with special needs. They're paired with typically developing peers, they're developing relationships and friendships and it's just been probably one of the greatest things we've done when I mm -hmm. think about it um, because it has given these kids who maybe weren't necessarily the most appropriate for your normal school classes and or school extracurricular activities, those same outlets, the ones that we all had. I mean, every kid needs to be able to participate in that stuff. It, it's just, it's part of a great quality of life. Um, yeah, yeah. But, and Courtney Leach, who runs that's a great, um, amazing person. So we lucked yeah. out with her, with her. Well, lucked out or by design or by divine intervention, right? Uh, yeah, all of, all of the above, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so a, a young physical therapist, uh, and her husband acquire a, a small fledgling uh, a home care uh, a pediatric services company, uh, grows that company to, uh, you know, roughly a thousand employees, maybe give or take a few, uh, a software firm that's now impacting uh, not just uh, the practitioners at Pediatrics Plus, but also other service providers in the state and outside the state. And I have no doubt that it'll be across the United States, uh, coast to coast um, in short order to a nonprofit that gives uh, kids with special needs the opportunity to participate in things that every other child has always been able to participate in. Uh, so a tremendous amount of good, obviously leadership successes. Now let's air the dirty laundry and talk about some of the failures, <laughs> right? Hey, I'm always- Build you up and then take- <laughs> Yeah, I've always said um, I could write a book on what not to do. Okay. Uh, but man, I could tell you this though, um, we haven't had a lot of major failures. So let's just, okay. you know, but what I would say is we had a lot of small ones along the way. Mm -hmm. um, mo many of them related to personnel, just mm -hmm. being afraid to handle stuff, not, um, not really understanding how to deal with people well. Um, 
And so when you're in a service business, I mean, it's painful if you're not doing all of that. So, I mean, just constant um, issues with, and I was super insecure um, back then, you know, when you're in your twenties and you don't, you know, you don't know what you're doing. So, um, you, you know, you're trying to act like you do, but you don't. Um, and so Thank just, you, till you make it. Yeah. Right. Well, you're handling things with a, with a foundation of insecurity that is yeah. never a sign of success. And so, but it took a few times of that collateral damage that I was talking about to really learn from that and start reading and investing in how to be a better leader. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. So, and then I'll tell you, our, probably one of the most recent failures we've had was, and it's not necessarily a failure all the way, but is going into Texas. Mm. So we go into Texas with the expectation, well, we've just done amazing in Arkansas. This is going to be a no brainer. Well, that was not the case. And mm. so we spent a lot of time um, really reevaluating it. So what we do now today that's successful there is could not be more different than what we went in to try to do, mm. Mm. but we had to stop and constantly pivot. And I can't, I can't even tell you how many much turnover we had over there. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, we, we kind of went, went in maybe a little bit too confident mm -hmm. and then um, figured out we didn't know we knew we as much as we thought we knew. So we <laughs> backed out, reevaluated and made a bunch of different changes until we were able to get, um, get it rolling. Um, Got it. But, you know, it's just staying, it's, it's persevering, staying on top of it, continuing to pivot and, and move quick and not let things drag too long, which is another failure that we did early on <laughs> yeah. was not making quick enough decisions. Yeah. I've always said failure is only failure if you quit. Otherwise it's just feedback, right? Well, it's uh, called learning experiences, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I'm really pushed with our staff to not, um, to make sure they're not afraid to take risks because we deal in our industry, there's a lot of insecurity um, mm. with people coming out of school, it's really surprising to me, but it's not because I remember being that way. Um, but trying to tell people, listen, it's okay to take a risk because we're, if, as long as you learn from it, um, I do mm -hmm. think there's, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are afraid, um, of failure. Well, I've only seen it as being really successful. I mean, it's painful in the moment, but you learn from it and you move on and it really, and then, but it makes you better over time. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's talk about, um, you've, you've talked a little bit around this, but if you could articulate probably the single greatest leadership lesson you've learned, what, how, what would you describe that as? Gosh, that's, that was hard. Um, so I think the biggest thing we did in terms of getting, um, because we're service and because we're people is building confidence in our staff. I guarantee you 90% of the personal issues that we've had over the last 20 years are when we're dealing with insecurities. When people are afraid to have hard, you know, hard conversations or face-to-face -face conversations or give feedback to someone, um, you know, it's not that hard, but people are really fearful of it. And so we've spent, been super intentional of really working with our staff to build their confidence. You are who you are. Be, be happy with the good and the bad and the ugly of who mm -hmm. you are. It's okay. We all have strengths and weaknesses. So we do personality testing. We walk through a lot of that stuff with we have spent years in meetings doing role playing mm. to help people build confidence with how to handle hard conversations coming mm. at them mm -hmm. and teaching people not to get emotional in those conversations. Somebody's giving you feedback that you don't like. So um, that has been huge trust and relationships right up there with it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think the most recent leadership lesson, and this one did not hit me, but I, you know, we got a leader cast every year. And I don't know um, if people were watching there that Nick Saban spoke, but it was something that hit me harder than probably most. I thought I've read that hundreds, hundreds of leadership books, but there was one thing that I, I, is still super high and um, is Nick Saban saying, it can't just be what they're going to do for you. It's what you're going to, how are you going to benefit them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've always looked at, well, the employee needs to come to work and do all these things to benefit the company. Well, he turned it around and I remember thinking, okay, we've got to make sure our staff understand we're there to benefit them. And that may not be with us long-term. Right. We may be yeah. a stepping stone, but we're going to make them the best they can be while they're with us. Even if down the road, their goal is to not be where they are right now. Hmm. That mindset shift and then spending time with our staff, helping them, we're going to get you where you want to be. So I may have a teaching assistant who doesn't have a degree yet. She wants to be a public school teacher. 
how do we get her there, even though it's not with us later? What do we right. do to build those skills? And so we kind of started switching our mindset. He, big, big impact. Um, Very that. good. That Very was a big good. lesson for me. Very good. Hey, guys, we're going to be opening up the floor for questions. So go ahead and put those in the chat if you would. Uh, while we're waiting for some of those questions to come in, I'm going to do, uh, I call it a lightning round. And I'm just going to throw a word out, right? I, I got a few words here and I'm going to just throw them out individually. And then you just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. All right. Okay. okay. I'll do my best because you know, I'm a processor. So we'll see if it comes to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to make, it's got to be, got to be quick. Got to be okay, quick. Okay, right. Okay. Um, family. Kids. Okay. Community. Oh gosh. I want to say connections so bad. Uh, oh, yeah. connections. Uh, Any connections. That's their, that's their uh, nonprofit. Uh, leadership. Hard. Hard. <laughs> Culture. Important. Success. Oh gosh. See, I'm not good on the spot. Um, thankful. Like, okay. Failure. Learning. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Round of applause. That was a good one. Good job. You did great. You, you know, I think those were all, um, uh, uh, those are all very, very good and, and things for us to, uh, to clue into and, and pay particular attention to. All right. Uh, we're going to open the floor. If, if, now that we're opening the floor, if you want to take your phone off of or your, your uh, computer off of mute, you can actually speak your question directly to Amy. Or if you, you're not comfortable doing that, you can put it into the chat and we will uh, fill, fill those questions from the floor. Don't be shy. <laughs> I'll throw one out to you. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk about pediatrics plus in five, seven, ten years, something like that. Where do you see where do you see pediatrics plus going? Um, well, we're going to continue to move through Arkansas and Texas and try, we're going to try some different approaches. So one of the things we've always done as a company is try to go where the need is. Um, and so we're looking at um, autism is just the biggest growing diagnosis um, of all. And mm -hmm. it's really taken over um, our sites. And so we're, but there is a huge need for service in that area. So we're looking at some different alternatives of treatment for kids with autism as they get into the school age and older, older adolescents. So, um, you know, when we, so when we talk about growth, maybe not so much in our preschool age, but where is the need? And that seems to be the biggest need right now. Um, so we're, we'll be continuing to look for opportunities in that area in Arkansas and stay and in Texas. Very good. Very good. Any other questions? We got someone on here from Sarah. Sarah said, uh, you said you read a lot of good leadership books. Do you have one that you would recommend for helping a leader uh, initiate a, a mindset of change in the organization? And okay, so kind of a so, change rate. What's the book? Who it is and why? Okay. Um, I'm so glad you asked this question because um, I actually had this down in my notes to say. So there is a book and I, and I call it the game changer of your life. Okay, I can't believe it's not more publicly out there. And maybe it is, and I'm just not aware, but it's called QBQ. Anybody familiar with this book? You familiar with this? Uh, the QBQ stands for the question before the question. But the title of the book is QBQ, how to eliminate blame, victim mental, victim thinking, and um, what's the other one? Um, I can't remember the rest of the title, but it is the single best book I have ever read. I used, and my staff will tell you, I used to carry around the book with stick with post-its attached to certain pages. I use that book in every meeting of confrontation I had for probably a decade. Now mm -hmm. I can quote most of it and I have it on my Kindle so I can pull it up um, on my phone, but let me tell you why. So this book is about personal accountability. So when we talk about, um, you know, people in jobs or whatever, it, it changes how you think. So we as a society are very victim-minded. Everything is someone else's fault. There's a lot of finger pointing and blaming. And I think even me um, used to kind of think a little bit that way and what it did and where it made the biggest impact for me is there's a chapter in there called Believer Leave. 
And this is kind of go, going back to my pearl of wisdom. So I'm trying not to give that away, but it talks about um, if you are somewhere and you do not, um, yeah, there you go. How, what to ask yourself to eliminate blame, victim thinking, complaining, and procrastination. <laughs> and it sounds really awful. So when I have given this book to so many people and they're like, do you think this is what I do? I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think <laughs> I, do, I promise, right? Um, but it will change your mind. Like one of the chapters, stress is a choice, right? So if you want to live in a level of stress all the time, then you can, or you can choose not to. Mm -hmm. Do you go to work somewhere where you're miserable every day because you don't like how things are being done? And then you complain and then you live in a state of, of being miserable. Why do we do that? So there's little bitty chapters. They're two and three pages long. They are super relevant and they will change how you feel. So if you are in a relationship, it could be anything. If you are in your job, um, where wherever you are, you look around and you go, does this fit me? Or why am I so miserable? And you change those things. Hmm. You have control of what you do and where you go every day. And so many people live in that place um, where they don't like where they work. So, but instead of taking it upon themselves to realize I'm just not the right fit here, they complain. And then they get in trouble at, at, or then they don't perform the way they need to perform or they're, so the company just is terrible. Well, maybe so. But if you look back and you think about what can I do about this? Um, in fact, I remember telling my husband, I'm so mad I read this because now when I don't act this way, I know I'm being ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like I need to um, own up. Um, but it is amazing in terms of taking control of your life and putting yourself in better situations instead of looking at everything around you as being the problem. So I, I love that. I, I, I'll talk about one can be a victor or a victim. They can't be both, right? You can't be both a victor and a victim at the same time. Uh, or, we have more uh, control than we think we have. Like we mm -hmm, can make right. more changes in our lives than we think we can. And it's, it may be hard in the moment, but long-term you will be so much happier. But well, I just ordered it. It's, 20 minutes to read that book too. I mean, it's well, it, and it'll be at my house in, uh, what's today, the, in five <laughs> days. So uh, I just ordered it. Um, I also heard somebody talk about victim thinking. They called it stinking thinking. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So I love that reference as well. Kind of tells you exactly what it is. So how do you balance everything? Work, family, being involved in the community, church, the whole thing. How do you, how do you balance Did it I mention all? that was in my failure list earlier? Mm. Um, I, no, um, I'll tell you, I have had, I, that is the biggest struggle I have had in my career is mm -hmm. balance because I do have OCD tendencies. Mm -hmm. So I can get wrapped up in something and get way too deep into it and then neglect things over here, even with reading books. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I will get a book and I may not get up until it's finished. So I, I balance is the biggest struggle that I have. I think one of the things that I've really tried to do is put good people around me and let go of things and let mm -hmm. other people do the things that I can't do yeah. right now. My priority is my kids. So I have made sure that all of the departments at Pediatrics Plus have excellent people. They're meeting my expectations. And I have actually pulled back a little bit just to make sure because they're in the teenage years. Yeah. Um, but I had to let go and quit trying to control everything um, in order to do that. So I'm accomplishing that better now than I have in 20, my entire career. But it was the hardest thing I've done. Well, and, and what people need to understand as well is that also makes the business more valuable from a financial sense because it's not built around the cult of personality of Amy. Right. And, and when you plug Amy, you know, I, I run into entrepreneurs every day who believe that they're going to sell their small business for $3 million and it's going to be their retirement. But what they don't understand is when you take them out of the business, it's not worth 300 grand, much less $3 million. And so building that business so that it operates with certainly your leadership, but, but you've built people around you and you've been able to let go of things that, that not right. only builds your value to your family, it builds the value of your business simultaneously. So it really yeah. is a win-win. It is. It's, it's been probably the last couple of years have been the best years in terms of balance. And I really feel like I'm present in mm -hmm. as a mother and a wife more than I, I have been. Very good. Well, Amy is with us today and she's got a personal question because her daughter wants to be a PT and said that uh, pediatric therapy seems to be a business that's growing quickly. 
do you worry that the market is getting saturated with physical and occupational therapists? No, let me tell you why. The uh, industry standard for most people in this field is eight to 10 years. It is not an easy um, job to do long-term. And so when I talked about growth opportunity, most of our people in leadership now and administration have come from OTPT speech because at some point they're ready to move out of the day-to-day of the therapy. I mean, as a PT, I remember just my joints hurting. I mean, you're holding kids and doing, um, and so I would say, no, there is always an opportunity for therapy um, because people leave the industry. There are a lot of people that are leaving therapy to do um, multi-level marketing. Um, so it can be an industry where people stay a really long time if there are opportunities maybe outside of um, 30 years of treatment mm-hmm. is what I would say. Um, but there, the, uh, there are so many kids right now that are getting referred for services. I do not see it ever being something that um, therapists won't be able to find jobs. Got it. Got another question that came in that said, okay, from the time you started your first location, so you said you leased some space and then you built some, from that point to where you are now, what was the time frame? How, how long so did it take you? 2003, we built our first location. So okay. what are we, 21, 18 years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we've done a lot recent. I mean, well, actually probably this year, last year we had plans. Those got derailed. <laughs> So some of that is being pushed. So we'll, we have a big growth year. We have an acquisition coming up and then some other um, organic growth opportunities that we'll, we'll be doing in January, 2022, so. Joe, who's with us tonight also asked, um, have you thought about expanding your business model beyond pediatric care, maybe adding additional services in the adult range? Not yet. Um, we've talked about it as the waiver, which is a service or a pay, a, I don't even know the word, a way that older adolescents and adults can get served, Um, looking into that. But right now, um, we're staying really focused on pediatrics and going where the need of the pediatrics is taking us, um, which is in more in the autism realm. But I think as they age, we Hmm. will probably follow them and create more opportunities as they get older. And so you, you cover to about what ages, up to, up to what ages today? Um, maybe up to 21, but we don't okay. have that many, um, probably above 15 or 16. And so I think what I'm hearing you say is uh, what would be called, rather than market extensions, you're starting to see uh, 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 product extensions or service extensions right. into the autism right. ranks and then uh, behavioral health and, and what have you. Yeah, so I mean, the, the growth potential and need is mm-hmm. behavioral health, and autism right now. Those are the mm-hmm. two areas that we are looking at expansion in across the state and wherever um, it takes us, but that's where the need is. And so mm-hmm. that's all we try to find, we really do try to go where, um, place our services where the need is. It's not as hard. Um, you're not out yeah. there trying to drum up service. Yeah. It's there before you get there. So uh, you mentioned that, you know, if you didn't spend any dollars, any money on marketing for the first eight years or so, how do you market and advertise today? What do you do? It's a lot of digital, a lot of social okay. media. Um, we do, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a few billboards in some places where we go new, when, where we just opened. Um, but yeah, I would say most of it is digital. We still do a lot of grassroots. We still go meet with our referring physicians and we talk to him about services and where we're seeing successes and new evidence-based practice that's out there. Um, you know, so that is, that we've been doing that the whole time. That's never changed. But we so like, your, go ahead. Go ahead sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, please. Well, we like seeing our refer, referring physicians um, mm-hmm. and talking through some of this stuff with them. It's their patients and we want them to know the different types of services we're providing for them, especially because evidence takes us a different direction sometimes. So we may be shifting and doing some things different. So we try to communicate that back to them. And so I know you've, um, you've, you you now have your, your own recruiting team. And so do you find that it's harder to, uh, to recruit new, new patients or is it harder to recruit new caregivers? And so when you think about your marketing spend, how how do you have that allocated? Uh, recruiting patients i'm sorry recruiting staff caregivers staff yeah 100 percent of the time recruiting staff 
Um, finding good recruiters is difficult. So yes, we're spending a lot on the recruiting side. Um, the patients, we do market, but it is a, I would, I, I would say our marketing director would say that we have a very small marketing budget compared to companies our size. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, we were just talking today, we, we had 47 referrals at our Little Rock site last week. So if that wow. gives you an under, I mean, probably total over 200. Mm. So we're not out trying to find clients. Mm -hmm. We can't ever find enough staff um, to keep up with the growth. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's where our money is and where our effort is right now. Got it. All right, Amy, it has been fantastic. I'm going to get ready to, uh, to pitch to you our final question for the night. Thanks for everybody that has, that has joined, whether you've been on Facebook uh, or you've been on Zoom with us tonight. Amy, oh, we have another question that came in, Amy. So before I give you the, the final question of the night, do you believe if you started marketing at an earlier phase of your business that it would have been exponentially larger or do you believe uh, it would have had an effect? I don't because um, again, even then we were having, we were only able to serve as much as we get hired to serve. Yeah. So had I marketed, I just have longer waiting lists. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, and so the lady that, or I don't know who it was that asked the question about the saturation of the market. That is why I'm mm -hmm. telling you no. I mean, 20 years later, I am still trying to hire. Gotcha. Um, and I wouldn't have maybe told you that 10 years ago, because when mm -hmm. I came out, there were a lot of uh, therapists in the, in the industry. Um, but it's, there are people leaving it more, I think, than um, used to. So Amy, we have uh, entrepreneurs, we have business leaders, we've got MBA students and other students on the, on the, uh, the broadcast tonight. So Leave us with a gem or maybe a pearl of wisdom that, that you think would be your, your best piece of work. What would you leave us with? Okay, my wisdom is this and um, always, has been for five years probably. Um, if you do not have a set of personal values, like figure out what is important to you, right? So is integrity important? Is communication important? Is faith important to you? What is important to you? And then when you're trying to find a job, go ask the company what is important to them and you make sure those things match up. Because mm -hmm. I don't care if you love what you do. If you're working for a company who does not share your same values, you will be miserable and you will be fighting it constantly. That was a little bit of my experience early on and why I wanted to have um, a little bit more control of what I was doing. Um, and so, and it, you've got to be on the same page in terms of what's important, move in the same direction, and then you'll have success together, but not if you're at odds with each other on how things need to be done. And so I have told every, I used to speak at our new grad luncheons every year. Now someone else does my talking, but I we still give the talk. This is the critical thing we tell them. It, Cause I don't know. I mean, in my twenties, I don't know if I had a personal set of values. I thought I knew it was important to me, but I never assessed whether it was in the relationships and in the company and everywhere I went to make sure there was a good fit. Mm. It is huge. Very good. And then you'll be happy, not in just what you're doing, but the people you're around and the, the, in the direction that your company is going. Great, great advice. Great counsel, Amy. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you and Todd and Krista and David, the whole group at Pediatrics Plus for all that you guys do for, for uh, children in our state and uh, both through Pediatrics Plus and through Community Connections. We appreciate you and, and it's been a pleasure having you with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Well, I thank y'all for having me. And hopefully I gave a little bit of uh, help to some You did. You did, and we'll be we'll be processing it for a while. You guys can, uh, if you if you just tuned in, you didn't get the whole thing. Uh, it'll be circulating on Facebook, LinkedIn uh, for the next uh, several days, and you can always access it at arconductor.org. That's arconductor.org uh, backslash resources. You can find it there as well. Amy, give my best to Todd. Take care, and thank you again so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye.